Hi everybody, today we're gonna to talk a little bit more about standard deviation. We're gonna do box plots. I'll talk about quartiles, which are a measure of position. And I just wanna make sure we understand what we're going over as we're trying to do descriptive statistics. So I thought we would start with another example just to show how we're using all of this to organize our data. So I was thinking like, what can I grab for a bunch of data? And I thought, why don't we look up how much quarterbacks get paid? So I looked up for the 2000 2022 season and how I sorted this was by their average salary. We don't really have to know how all that works that players have this certain amount of money they make but then they can pay it over cap like that doesn't matter. We just have a bunch of numbers. It kind of sort of has them ranked like it is in order but you'll see sometimes it's missing numbers so I'm not even worried about that. I just wanted to grab a lot of numbers. So I took all of these numbers and I put them in Excel so I can see the player. They're all quarterbacks and then we have how much money they make. I took out the comma um, separators, I took out the dollar sign because I didn't want it, and I just copied these numbers and I went to Desmos. It looks like this, and I will put the URL for this exact worksheet in the description of the video in YouTube, so if you're watching this inside a Blackboard or something, it won't have it, but if you click over to the YouTube and you want this, it'll have like this exact thing you can go to if you want to. So you can see there's 108 elements that I'm using. There could be more quarterbacks. I'm using 108. And just to give you some idea of all of these numbers, right? This is a lot of numbers. If I wanted to organize it, uh, maybe I want to look at a chart. So I said, make a histogram. I had to decide like a bin width, like how far away to have it. And I ended up doing it by a million because that's a lot of numbers. So I'm just going to show you what that looks like. Now, what I see from this is that most quarterbacks don't make this crazy amount of money like lucky Aaron Rodgers and we don't want to say lucky I know he works hard right but there are people that make a, a ton more money than other people you see this really like most common thing down here is is this smaller amount of money right so most of them don't make that this is this is much much smaller and then we have kind of scattered out here a few that are that are making that really really big amount of money and you probably know who those players are so that's what I see just like by sight if we wanted to know like, okay, what's the mean? So let's type in mean and I call this Q for quarterback. Um, so this gives me the idea of the mean, which is $7,324,011, whatever. So um, that would be the mean, but let's look at the median because the median will be lower. So the median is a million. So it says half of the players make more than 1.6 million, half of the players make less than 1.6 million. So a big difference between those two. Let's also look at the standard deviation. And I don't know that I grabbed all the players, so I am not gonna do standard deviation of the population. I'll do standard deviation of the sample that I have. And this shows you the standard deviation is huge. It's $12 million. So there's that $12,338,788. So this says there is a lot of difference between the values in this set. So that's um, a big thing to know. It doesn't give you like a good feeling like, do I really know how this is proportioned out? Like what did the player's salaries look like? So I'm gonna type this other thing called stats of Q. And this is gonna tell me a lot. So the stats tells me the minimum value was $660,000. So the person making the least amount of money out of these, what did I say, 108 players that I grabbed was $660,000. The first quarter, so this 895,000, which is the quartile one, tells me 25% of the players make between 660 and 895,000. We already had the median but also tells me another 25% make between 895,000 and this 1.6 million. Quarter three is $6.5 million roughly. So another 25% make between these two values of 1.6 million and 6.57 million. And then the maximum is out here at 50 million. So another 25% are between there. So I kind of like this. This gives me a good idea 25% in this first range, 25% in the second range, 25% in this third range, and then the rest of them out here. Visually, let me turn off my first graph and let's have it do that. So I'm gonna type box plot um, and I'm going to type Q because that's what we called it. And then I'm gonna hit zoom fit and we're gonna do this a couple times. 
So this box plot did the same thing. It drew the graph for me. So I can see down here, this was my lowest amount of people, right? How the 660 and pretty close to it was the first quartile, which was $895,000. This line inside is the median, and then you can see here's the um, third quartile. Um, and then something weird happens here. So let me take the outliers out. This would be everything else, right? So this would be Q3, and this is to go to the end. So my smallest, my largest, my first quartile, my second quartile, my third quartile. Um, I'm going to go back and click the exclude outliers to say, about here is where it kind of stops the normal dispersion and you have these players and these are the players we see in commercials and we know their names and we probably know what team they play on just by looking at their name these are the people that make a ton of money and you can click on them and it would show you the amounts of money that it represents so i want to go back and review that with you and make sure we understand what all this stands for so looking here at my graph i can see the first line is my minimum value and then if I'm including the outliers, the last line is my maximum value. When I get to this rectangle, the first line is my quarter one, quartile one. The line in the middle of the rectangle is the median, which we also call quartile two. And then on the right, we call that quartile three. So 25% is below the first quartile. 50% is between quartile one and quartile three and then another 25% is after quartile three, so above it. We call this amount from quartile one to quartile three. We call it IQR, that's the inner quartile range, so it tells me where 50% of the data is at. So let's try an example of that. So let's say I gave you this box plot and I asked you these questions. So on the graph, hopefully you can tell it goes 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, but each little like line in the graph represents two. So if I say, what's the minimum? I can go, that's two, four, six. So this would be a six. So my minimum was six. Quartile one is eight. The median right here, so this was 10, 12, 14, there's 16. Quartile three, so this was 40, 42, 44. So I'm just counting the lines, right? So this was 40, 42, 44. And then the maximum is at 60, right? So I didn't have to crunch any numbers. I'm just reading the data. Then I asked for the interquartile range, Q, um, IQR. So that would be Q3, which is 44 minus Q1, which was eight, and that would be a difference of 36. So this says, which interval has more data? Is it between six and 16? Is it from 16 to 44? Or it, is it between 50 and 60? So here's what I look for. Six to 16, that has 50% of the data, right? I go from my first quartile up to my second quartile, so that's 50% of the data is here. So those are 50%. Then from 16 to 44, well, that's Q2 to Q3. That's only 25% of the data. And then 50 to 60, 50 is inside this last quartile to 60. I know this is less than 25%. So what I can tell you is 50% of the data, that is my most between six and 16. So same kind of thing, which interval has the least amount of data? So I had the same numbers. This was 50, this was 25, and this was less than 25%. So this last one, less than 25%, that has the least amount of data. So it's not how many numbers does it go for, it's what percent of data falls in that range. So this graph gives the number of employees by year for Apple from 2005, 2021. And because this is entirely, um, I said that the mean here is for population, it's 81.89. I found the median was, was 80.3, pretty close. The standard deviation to say how far out is it spread is 46.99. You can see this has been growing over time. The first quartile is 33.15. So what does that say? The first quartile being 33.15 says that 25% of the years, Apple had less than 33.15 thousand employees. Quartile three being 127.5 says 25% of the time, Apple has had more than 127.5 thousand employees. 
All right, so let's ask some questions. The first one says, 25% of all years have at or below what value of employees? So we just said that was 33.15, and I'm just gonna write the word thousand. And then 25% of the years, they had at or above 127.5 thousand employees. So watch for those words, a below and above, it tells you to switch between the quartiles. What percent of the years were there between 33.15 and 127.5 thousand? Well, it says percent. You can see this was Q1 to Q3, so this is 50% of the time. And then the IQR is when I subtract Q1 and Q3, which is 94.35. So I just want to share how often these kind of numbers come up when you're trying to read things. So this is an example from the length of hospital stay after hip fracture surgery and one year mortality. So this was a total of 4,213 patients were discharged after hip fracture surgery, of whom 604 died within a year of discharge. The average length of stay was 30.7 days with a standard deviation of 24.5 days. What's hidden here is average. Well, we're going to assume average means the mean there. And standard deviation tells you higher or lower, that's a big swing. If the average is 30 and we have a standard deviation of 24.5, that says there's a lot of change. So let's look at this a little more and say how many standard deviations is a 50-day stay from the mean? So say somebody stayed 50 days, is that unusual? So here's 50, the number of days we want to look at. We said our average was 30.7. When I subtract that, I get 19.3. So our standard deviation was 24.5. So I'm going to take 19.3. I'm going to divide by 24.5. And this says this was about, I'm going to round it, 0.79 standard deviations from the mean. And a lot of times that's going to be our comparison. And we say, was it a lot away? Was it a little bit away? And this was within one standard deviation. So let's try it again and say, what if we were lucky and we had a patient that got to go home in 10 days? Or maybe that's unlucky. Maybe that's saying that the person went home too soon and that's completely um, abnormal. So we're going to take 10. And we're going to subtract the average, which was 30.7. So this is negative 20.7. The negative doesn't matter so much, so you can drop it for now. We'll talk about that a lot more as we continue to talk about statistics. So I'm going to again divide by 24.5, which was our standard deviation. And this says this is about 0.84. So it's farther away, like the 10 day is farther away from the mean than the 50 day. Call this a z-score. So the z-score tells you how many standard deviations away a data point is from the mean. Depending on the type of mean and standard deviation you have, you do have a different formula. So you could have z is x minus x bar over s, or you might have x minus mu over sigma, just difference between the sample and the population. So how could we use that? Well, say we had a budget, and so a music school had budgeted to purchase three musical instruments. They plan to purchase a piano costing $3,500. They're getting a guitar for $400 and a drum set that costs $625. The mean cost for a piano is $4,000. So I'm going to go ahead and say subtract because we want to see that difference. And there's a standard deviation of $2,500. So I'm going to divide by $2,500. The mean cost for the guitar is $500. So let's subtract $500. And the standard deviation is 200. And then the mean cost of drums is 700. And a standard deviation of 100. So each time we're comparing, kind of like, did we get a good deal? <clears throat> so 3,500 minus 4,000 divided by 2,500. This was, I'm going to write the negative just to show it. It's negative 0.2. Then the guitar, 400 minus 500 divided by 200. This is negative 0.5. And then the drums, 625 minus 700 divided by 100 gives us 0.75. When we look at this, this 0.75 is our biggest number. So the 0.75 being bigger says that's where we got our best deal and we really did a good job of searching and finding something that we could afford. So I hope that kind of clarifies a little. What would you use standard deviation for? Z-scores are going to be really big. We're going to talk about them again and again. And I hope you see how useful a box plot is and that technology will be our key to success. Good luck.